Good morning and welcome to CSC. We ask that all visitors please fill out and turn in visitor slips at the Connect Corner in the lobby and receive our new gift bag. Please update our prayer list by emailing your request to tscprayerrequest1 at gmail.com or text 252-206-6969 and in person by simply filling out a prayer card and dropping it in the prayer box on the altar by ministry seating. Please observe all handicapped reserve seating for those in need of special care and please no food or drink in the worship center. Bottled water only. Thank you so much. Please do not leave personal items or trash in the seats. All unauthorized items left in the seats will be placed in the lost and found bin behind the welcome desk at the Connect Corner. Your cooperation is deeply appreciated. And remember, at the Connect Corner, monthly event calendars, church directories, sermon CDs can all be picked up there. You can register for home life groups and more. Plus, you can also receive our 24-ounce CSC Stadium Cups for a donation of just $2 at the Connect Corner as well as CSC decal stickers for a donation of just $1. Please continue to share all sermon series and freedom worship videos on Facebook. Then comment, please share. Check us out online at cscsandycross.com for all new features, including online giving. Finally, the all-new CSC app is ready for download. Please pick up a copy of instruction for both Android and Apple at the Connect Corner on your way out today. Now... Let's get ready to pray it in as we prepare for today's worship celebration. Let's make some noise for Jesus! Hallelujah! Come on here. Y'all heard what the man of God said? He said, let's make some noise for Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. For the Bible declares that everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Did you come to get your praise on this morning? Have God been good to you all week long? Come on here. Hallelujah. We serve such an awesome God. He's awesome in all his ways. Will you pray with me? Ah, great is your faithfulness. Lord, we come before your presence on this morning, Lord. We come with thanksgiving. We come with praise, God. We come with honor, Lord. We come asking for forgiveness, Lord. Of every sin, every transgression, God. Anything we may have said or done, Lord. We're asking that you will forgive us, God. Now as we enter into your presence, God. Allow the spirit of the Lord to reign in this place, God. Move us past our flesh and into your presence, God. We say have your way in this place, God. Do whatever you would like, Holy Spirit. We yield our vessels unto you, God. Move in this place, God, as never before. Let the spirit of Judah fall in this place, God. God, we come asking that you will make this atmosphere conducive now, God, to miracle signs and wonder, God. For we, your people, come with an expectation on this morning, God. We come pulling on you this morning, God. Meet every need in this place, God, according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Anoint our man of God, Lord, as he opened his mouth to speak the word, the living word, God. Let your fire fall in this place, God. Burn up everything that's not like you, God. Thrust us forth to a new place in you, God. God, that we will tell a lost and a dying world of your love, God. Of your mercy and of your grace, God. God, that they will come running unto you, your loving arms, God, to receive salvation. For this is our purpose, God, that all mankind will be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. Now do it for your glory, God. We say do it for your glory. And God, we'll be so ever careful to give you the praise, to give you the glory, and to give you all the honor. For it's in the matchless name of Jesus we do pray. And the church said, Your 
Can't you see? Can't you see? What my Jesus has done for me? Can't you see? Can't you see? What the Holy Ghost is doing in me? Can't you see? What the Holy Ghost is doing in me. He's doing something in me. Oh, come on. He's doing something. Come on, is the Holy Ghost doing something in you? feel like you can run all the way to Sandy Crop. God has something special planned for this place today. I want you to look at the person next to you and say, you're so blessed to be here today. So blessed. Now look at him again and say, you look so beautiful today. That was kind of weird, I know. Amen. <laughs> How many know he's in the room already? Yes. Let's get a four count. Oh, 
glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand against.
are you listening to today? Thank you, Father. I choose to listen to your voice. Thank you, Lord. I will not fear. I will not back down, but I will press forward to the high mark of the calling of Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, he's worthy of our praise. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, may we never 
never take moments like this for granted. These are so important. It is so important for your people to react when you hover down in the room. Because you have heard and smelled a sweet fragrance of worship that has caught your attention so much that you allow your spirit to fall corporately on a room, yet individually at the same time. I pray right now the words in the Run to the Father song that anyone carrying a burden knows that you weren't created to bear it alone. You were created to let it all go to the one who created you. I pray right now that anyone that's been hiding from God and been waiting for a certain time and a certain moment realizes that now is the moment. Now is the time. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. I don't care who you are in this room right now, but you know that he's tugging on your heart. You don't have to wait for an end of sermon altar call. You can come right now and you can run to the Father and you can quit trying to climb the obstacles of life alone because alone it's so difficult. Alone it's so hard. But with Jesus, you're not alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. We exalt you above all things. Jesus. Hallelujah. One more time, let's sing. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh, calls his word. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a big eruption of praise as though it were the last time you ever had the opportunity to thank him here on earth. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. At this time, I want our ushers to come. Let's keep worshiping. So we'll only have buckets at the front today. During this time, you can drop your tithing offering in the bucket. You can go get to the restroom. Go get some water. Amen. Again, we want to practice and be safe. If someone isn't comfortable shaking hands, understand that, be not offended, amen. We're just glad you're here, amen. We're just glad you're here. How many know the gathering of the church has been attacked? But how many know we're more powerful when we're together? Amen. I'm glad you're here today, amen. How many know God has his hands on this place? Amen. We're going to have this time. Go ahead and take a break. We're going to have a five-minute intermission. You can uh, pray over tithes here. I'm going to get Pastor Tim to pray.
pray over the tithe. Let's do that first. I want him to pray. I'm sorry. I'm just so pumped up. I don't know what in the world to do with myself right now. I need to go calm down somewhere. Come on, Brother Tim. Pray over the tithes and offering. Then let's have some intermission, and then we'll come back together for a teaching of a lifetime this morning that the Holy Ghost has given you. Let every heart pray. Father God, we just come before your presence, Lord. God, we're so thankful, God, that you invited us in to worship, God. God, we thank you, Lord, that your word says, they that worship must worship in spirit and in truth, God. So, God, we come empty and out ourselves, God. God, now, God, we ask that we will worship you in our giving, God. God, we ask that you will see what we give, God. And, God, we ask that you would increase it a hundredfold, God. God, when we go throughout the land, God, may these monies go throughout the land, God, bringing forth healing, bringing forth deliverance, God. In your matchless name, God, we do pray and we do thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
atmosphere of worship in this place. Ah, hallelujah. What better place to be than before the throne, kneeling at his feet in worship. Truly, we thank God for your liberal giving. We thank God for you coming out to be a part of this. Truly, this service couldn't be what it is without your presence here. So we thank God for landing on your heart to come out and to share and worship with us. Is that all right? And also, I want to say a quick thing. We want to keep Daniel Mike, Daniel Mike, grandfather, lifted up in prayer. They diagnosed him with stage four cancer. But how many know that he's a healer? God is a healer. Hey, God. It's moments in worship like this of bring forth healing as we tap into the throne room. Are y'all ready for the word? Oh, my God. I know he's already on fire this morning. I know he's ready to go. Can we turn them loose in this place? Huh? Point your hands towards the man of God. Say, Pastor Daniel, release the word that God has given you to give to me. Hallelujah. Come on, man of God. Our pastor, Pastor Daniel Parker, the greatest pastor this side of heaven. Hey, hey. Love you too. God bless you. Woo. Hallelujah. It's hard to keep going right now. Hallelujah. I just feel like singing some more. <laughs> Jesus, but nevertheless, he has a word for today. But I'm going to slow down a little bit and take my time and tell you a few things quick things. Give me some announcements, then we've got something special before we release the kids this morning. You can get the updated uh, reopen plan. It's at the Connect Corner now. Also, due to the heat, we're not going to have any parking lot services, okay? This is so much better right now. Amen. Uh, we've got all the nursery, Junior King's Kids, King's Kids for Elementary Students. It's all available on Wednesdays and Sundays, but volunteers are needed. We need some help. We've got the same ones working it again and again, and they want to come to church too. They want to be a part of what we just had. So let's take that under consideration, amen, especially when they're always back. It's a blessing for them to be back there. They love what they do, but amen, they need to be able to worship too. So if the Lord lays it on your heart to do it, you may not want to do it, but how many, have, have you ever had God lay something on your heart you didn't want to do? Amen. Hallelujah. He does it all the time. He's good for that. Bless him. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, the services are available online always. And please, 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 if you are on Facebook, use it for the gospel of Jesus Christ and promote and share the messages. Okay? Promote and share the messages. Uh, that way it reaches people that maybe aren't connected to the church or not connected to me. Next, please. Our golf tournament has been pushed back again Friday, September 25th. We'll need some help with that. And so we know it's a tough time to fundraise, but if you know of anyone that would T-sponsor, sponsor a team, or put a team in the golf tournament, we would really appreciate it. Amen? Anything else up there? Okay, also, I know there is something added August uh, – is Joy in the room? There she is. Is it August 2nd? August 2nd, after service that day, for the Junior King's Kids, uh, King's Kids Elementary, uh, all the youth, really, um, she's going to have uh, a CFC summer splash party. And there's going to be all kinds of things going on. They're going to have food, refreshments, sweets, um, a water balloon fight, all kinds of stuff going on. Duncan Booth. And so uh, participate in that. It'll be right after church that day, and we'll have more information as soon as it's available. All right? All right. Hallelujah. Boy, that was some good praise and worship a while ago. Hey! hey. Woo. We could go to the house right now, and we've done good for Jesus. But nevertheless, we're going to do something else. I want my beautiful, hot I get excited. When, oh, I'm getting excited when I look at it. Wife, to come and join me on the platform. We've got something special we want to do this morning. Come on, sweetness. Me and her 
the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord has laid it on our heart to, to bring something back. We think it's time to bring back something we used to do years ago, and it's called Servant of the Month. And we want to do it again. Amen? Uh, this is an honoring church. And it's, people don't do what they do here in order to get um, attention or recognition. But we think it's important to thank people for what it is they do. And so we're going to be doing this for two. We used to do one servant of the month. We're going to do two servants of the month. Amen? <laughs> and we're going to do that this morning. And there is a slew of people that could go first and be the very first ones that we recognize. We can't simply recognize everybody that does outstanding things in this church. And there are so many people that let their light shine. But the Lord knows who you are. And I promise we will get to you. Amen? But when we prayed about it and we said, who are the first two that we want to recognize uh, as we bring this wonderful honor back to CFC? Our first servants of the month that we want to recognize are Braden Langston and John David Pridgen. Come on down. You just don't understand all that they have been doing to make your church sound great, look great, the next level that God has used them. Come on, guys. And they've had to put up with me, my mouth. Amen. Hey, I love you both. I know I get on your nerves. I just want things to be great for Jesus. Amen. I know you do too. But this morning was amazing. Everything sounds amazing. It looks amazing. And I know it's going to get better and better and better. Thank you all for the long nights. The weekends, you could have been home with your families, and you were up here to try to make this church uh, get to the next level that God has called us to. Amen? I thank you both from the bottom of my heart. Amen? I love both of you. Amen? Now get back to work. All right. I'm just kidding. Also, during the shutdown, we missed an important event that we have honored and recognized in the past. And so we were kind of waiting for things to settle down and us get back in here. But we missed Administrative Assistant Day. And so now we want to take the time to honor the people who do that type of work for the church. And so uh, let's see. Yeah, I want to do these first. Even though I've given them the summer off, I still recognize what they do, and that is our volunteer receptionist, Becky Johnson. Thank you for working in the office during the week, answering the phones. And Barbara Hoover, thank you. Amen. Thank you for all you do. Hallelujah. And now, this next one, all right. We want to thank this person for all they do in our office and for opening up the building week in and week out. Really, my personal assistant handles so many things for me, purchases things, orders things. I can ask him something, and I always know it's done, and I never have to worry about it. He, he is a finisher, amen? He is a follow-through-er, amen? And I appreciate our office manager, Anthony Hopkins. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Week in, week out. And next, an absolute treasure to our church, an absolute uh, humble person, just a wonderful human being, a wonderful heart, has stuck with us through thick and thin. And God truly sent a gift to this church when he sent our secretary, Suzanne Langley. Amen. Amen. Yes, Suzanne, you have to walk down here. You have to receive. Come on, people. 
A little bit more than that. A little bit more. 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 Amen. Thank you. What a gift she is. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Nick, you are a blessed man. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. And finally, this is a person that stepped up. And uh, when Suzanne kind of handed over the mantle of treasury work, which is like a full-time job, and we were praying about who would she train, who would be able to do this, and then out of nowhere, her daughter spoke up and said, God said, why not me? And so she answered the call. At the same time, she works in an emergency room in Pitt Hospital at a time of a global pandemic. She's raising a small infant baby uh she's Braden's wife so that's a job within itself <laughs> but she is the treasurer for our church and she is she 30 yet is she 30 years old she's not she's not 30 I'm sorry what I'm trying to say is that's a very good thing because you know you're under 30 years old and you're doing one of the biggest jobs that you're probably the youngest treasurer this church has ever had in the history of church. Would you say that, Pastor Jerry, the youngest treasurer ever? And doing a phenomenal, detailed, wonderful job. Finally, we want to honor our church treasurer, Rebecca. You know her as Becca Langley Langston. Come on down. Come on, church. Big job. Big job. Constantly doing something all the time with it. We got you. We got you. Amen. And guess what? I'm going to Braden knew all about it. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Can we thank her one more time? Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Snap them pics if you can. I know that was fast, but hallelujah. I feel blessed. This is the house of God, and the house of God is a house of honor. Amen. So thank you all for serving. Thank our servants of the month. Amen. Serving in the church is a wonderful, wonderful thing. At this time, the King's Kids can be dismissed. Can we thank our person that is uh, doing the King's Kids this morning? Melinda. Say thank you, Melinda. You can turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. How many love the Bible? Second Timothy chapter 3. We are in a series. Anybody know what it's called? Unprecedented. The picture there says it all. Amen. We are in a series that certainly describes the times we are living in, and that is unprecedented, meaning not known or have been done before. So its definition is synonymous with terms like uncharted territory. Pioneering achievements. Synonyms, meaning similar words for it, are unparalleled and unequaled, which sounds a lot like our God. His creation, His salvation, His resurrection, and soon return are all certainly unprecedented. And we celebrate Him because no other is like Him. No other can do what He's done. And no, no other name is higher than His. When you speak his name with authority and with the knowledge of knowing who he is, what he's capable of, and the depth of his character, you are speaking the greatest power in the universe. Amen? It is important for you to know how to apply his name to your situation. It is important for you to understand what he has already done. It's important for you to understand you don't have to keep begging him for something that he wants you to have. Amen. All you got to do is believe that it is finished in the name of Jesus. Does anybody realize how powerful he is? Amen. We've got an end times teaching to share with you this morning. And so I want to just show you the scriptures that God has given me. The belief that I have as a Christian in studying the Bible now for over a decade or more. And then also what he has recently said to me. And I want you to just pay attention and just tune out any distractions, anything you got going on uh, this day. Hone in on what thus saith the Lord is saying right now. Can we do that? 
Father, we praise you. We love you. We thank you, Lord God, that when we run to you, you are there. And God, we praise you. You are our Father. You are our help, our ever-present help in our time of need. And God, we ask you today to shed light on your word. May it illuminate, Lord God, and rest in the spirits of all those here and those that are online. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. For those that are watching online this morning, please put something in the chat so we will know that you are with us. We want to know that we're connecting with you. If you're a visitor this morning, make sure you fill out your visitor slip and turn it in. That's right now the only way I can connect with you because I no longer stand at the double doors during this season to greet. But I also want to say this. If you're a part of this church and you're not able to make a Sunday morning service or you're not able to make a Wednesday night Bible study, please watch it online. If you can't watch it live, then watch it, uh, record it, and then like it, comment, so that we know we're connecting with our people. There are people right now that we're just not, I, I've not seen them, I'm not, we're not connecting with them, and I know that some are uncomfortable, and we, we respect people's decisions and opinions, amen? But at the same time, don't lose connection with your church, because that's what the enemy wants to do in a time like this, amen? I love that you're in here, and I respect that. And if you're not comfortable being here, then be online. Amen. If you're sitting at home in your jammies right now watching, amen, put something in the chat so this preacher knows he's connected with his people. Is it okay to ask for that? Amen. All righty. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. Last week, we spoke of what it was like to witness unprecedented moments. And we talked about all positive things like God. Uh, what it must have been like to see man walk on the moon. That was before my time, but what it must have been like to witness that. Then great sports moments. We talked about that. And then we even talked about the live rescue of a little girl out of a well that I remember back in the late 80s, early 90s. All positive, uplifting things. All positive, uplifting moments. But what about unprecedented moments that were tragic? I remember as a boy watching the space shuttle Challenger take off. I was standing in my grandmother's dining room. I stayed with her during the summer when school was out. I think it was in the summer. It had to have been for me to have been there that, that day unless I was acting like I was sick. But I was at Granny's, and I had one grandmother that would let you get away with that, and I had another one that did not let you get away with that. So it must have been there in the summertime. I can go back and research. But I remember seeing that space shuttle go up in the air, and then it exploded. And I remembered right then, all those people are gone. And it saddened me to see that on live television. It was unprecedented to watch something like that. Then you have the JFK assassination that took place. And that was way before my time, but I certainly remember uh, seeing the documented footage of what happened to the man, the President of the United States, Walter Cron Cronkite, shedding tears because the President had died. That was a terrible thing. Amen. Any time, if, when that happens, whether you voted for that President or not, President or not, that is tragic when the leader of the free world is assassinated. It then happened again to President Reagan, and thank God he survived. Amen. But it was unprecedented to see something like that. And then, of course, 9-11. 9-11, I remember where I was. I was, I was uh, working for the radio station down here on 97. And I remember going into the break room and saw that it was on the news that a plane had crashed into a tower. And we thought, how in the world could that, something like that happen? And as we were all gathered around the TV, then another plane hit the building. And then we knew it was intentional. This was not an accident. This was a terrorist attack. And we were all, the country was under attack. And we had never been under attack since uh, Pearl Harbor. And I remember the boss walked in who was always, never let you out of work early. You had to sell, sell, sell ads all day long till 5 o'clock. Came in and said, you know what? Go home and hold your families today. And I knew right then, this was unprecedented. This was huge. Many were scared. I remember my wife and I were going down the highway one night, and right after this had happened, 
and a fire truck was, was zooming down the road, and everybody on the highway, it was on 301 in Rocky Mount, all went off to the side of the road so that fire truck could go right down the middle so they could get to where they were going. And I remember my wife saying, she says, everybody cares right now like never before. The compassion, the kindness that was going on, we were humbled by 9-11. What in the world has happened to our world now? A global pandemic hits. It comes, and I'll say this, and I'm not trying to be political, but I want to tell you what I've been seeing. A global pandemic comes from a communist country. And now we have communist agendas being pushed on our society. This has always been a free country. But now we are seeing Marxism and socialism. I've had someone tell me that the, the, the Christian church was founded upon social, socialist uh, ideals. I said, ah, 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 ah. no, it was not. No, it was not. Don't. Yes, I know the church came together. I know they all sold property. I know they all put their money together and nobody lacked for anything. But do not doubt the sacrifice it takes to establish something and get it off the ground. Amen? Do not. Because I can also show you scripture where it says if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. Amen? So don't tell me that socialism is the right thing to do. Don't tell me that Marxism is the right thing to do. That's anti-biblical. It does not recognize the man as the head of the house, and the Bible says it. Even though people don't like that. It takes away the deity of marriage. It takes away the power of marriage, the meaning of marriage. Amen. We've got all kinds of things being pushed on our country. Amen. And now we even have statues being torn down. And I get that there's different opinions on that. And I respect all of that. But now, tearing down statues of Jesus Christ? Does that not tell you that there's something satanic trying to creep up in some things? Amen. I'm here to tell you we need to pray like never before. And it's not political. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. Amen. We're seeing cities burn to the ground. Right? We're seeing cities burn to the ground. We're seeing cities where the police have been told to back away. Now the murder rate has quadrupled. We have got small babies being shot in strollers. Amen. Small children being shot in strollers and my children of minority children of color yet we say their color matters but did their color matter they're being killed in the streets they matter amen what in the world is happening? The devil's on a rampage. He's confusing messages. He's getting behind things. And he's dividing people. Can I tell you the church, the Christians cannot fall for this garbage? We have got to come together. No matter who you like, no matter what you vote for, you got to stand by the Word of God because the Word of God will never fail you. Governments will fail you. Come on, politicians will fail you. They are people, but the Word of God still stands when man can't stand. Hallelujah. We go into the impoverished communities where other people are speaking for Don't speak for them. That's their neighborhood. They want to be protected. Hallelujah. Got people that don't even live there making decisions for them to take the police away. Hallelujah. And then they interview the people that live in that community. No, no, please stay. We're dying over here. Amen. Craziness. Unprecedented times. The Bible warned and foretold of tragic times that have come and are yet to come. I don't want to speak of it now. But I do want to talk when I get to the subject of pestilences. I want to tell you about something that the Lord showed me in a vision yesterday morning. Amen? And so when I get to the subject of pestilences, I'm going to talk about that. But the Bible has warned and foretold of tragic times that have yet to come and that have come and are yet to come. It's always um, important to remember when you're talking about end times throughout the Bible, it's transcending. 
Meaning Jesus can say something, the Apostle Paul can say something, and they, they mean it for a time that has already happened, and it can also apply to a time that has not yet happened, right? And how many know it's okay not to know everything now? It's okay not to know everything yet. But what we can do is pull some truths out of the Bible this morning. This is more of a teaching, but the Lord said a Sunday morning crowd can handle it. Amen? I might not do backflips this morning too much. Amen. I did enough of that a while ago during worship. But, the, but God has put a teaching anointing for this time this morning, so I want you to perk up your ears, okay? You ready? Now, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul describes the last days and the character of people. The Apostle Paul's second letter to his apprentice, the young pastor named Timothy, who led the early church in Ephesus, also serves as an admonishment, meaning a firm warning, also called admonition, to the church of today and very well describes a uh, time in recent past, times as of right now, and times yet to come. He says in verse 1, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Watch this. Having a form of godliness but denying it's power. There are too many Christians today. They can, they act real churchy. They've been in church a long time, but they don't have a bit of power. Amen? Because they don't believe in anything to change. They're stuck in this and they're stuck in that. They come on, somebody. We don't yet know how to walk in the power. Amen. When you get the distractions out of the way, when you get yourself out of the way, when you're all about him instead of all about you, you will start to see the power of God move in such a way that you'll be able to lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. Come on, somebody. Cancer tumors shall fall off. Daddies shall come back home. Marriages shall be restored. Churches shall thrive. Come on, somebody. And people you've been praying for to get saved for decades shall give their hearts to Jesus in this last day. Amen? It's great they've got godliness, but they've got to quit denying its power. We have entire denominations. Entire, oh, help me, Jesus. Pray for me, Brother Chuck. Entire denominations that if they had walked in here a while ago and heard some shouting and heard a preacher and a worship leader doing a little tongue talking, Brother Chris, they'd have run for the door. You know what they classified as? Come on, help me. A circus. They'll call it a circus. Amen. But that was for the time of the apostles. But I beg to differ, sir. I beg to differ, ma'am. Jesus, when he prayed for the Holy Spirit, he said that he would come and he would abide, meaning he would stay. Can I tell you the Holy Ghost hasn't gone anywhere? He's still here. He hasn't, he's not hiding. He's not resting. He's not going home. Good God Almighty, he's here. So why not celebrate the Holy Ghost? Why not embask? In the power of God. Amen. I'm here to tell you, church without the Holy Ghost is boring. And look, I'm going to tell you something. Y'all going to pray for me. Back when I won't say, I love sin too much to get radically changed in a boring church. I know that sounds mean. I was a good sinner. I was great at it. There's people in here right now who know how great I was at it. Because you were right there in the ditch with me. And if I went to a funeral home, a.k.a. church, 
That won't enough to change me. When are we going to get out of here? I got things to do. God knew I needed a radical change. He knew I needed to feel the presence of him in the room. He knew, he knew I needed to hear a preacher who would not stop giving an altar call just because somebody's stomach was rumbling and they wanted some fried chicken. He knew I needed to hear a message. He knew I needed to see power, feel power. He, come on. He knew I needed to hear a choir sing. It was a great thing that he did for me. He knew I needed to feel the power of him in the room. Otherwise, I was going to walk out the door and just keep on living the same simple life I'd been living. Oh, come on, somebody. I needed to feel power. I needed to experience power. Amen? I'm so grateful that I did. Hallelujah. Have I been perfect since? Nope. Still fall short of the glory of God and still sin. But I have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. I do not want religion. I almost got it wrong at the first. The do's and the don'ts. The do's and the don'ts. The do's and the don'ts. Going to hell today. Got to get saved again. Got to do this. Got to do that. Amen. Come on, somebody. But then I realized. I realized. Hallelujah. What he did on that cross was way too good for me to lose it every other day. Amen. And as long as I'll be real with him. Come on, somebody. Now, his grace don't give me a free pass to go sin. It don't give me a free pass to go live opposite and defiant of him. Amen. I, come on. I told you I rejected religion. But when I had a relationship with him. Amen. Come on, somebody. Not mama's relationship. Not grandma's relationship. Come on, somebody. Not even my pastor's relationship. I could not piggyback on somebody else's relationship. I had to have a walk with him on my own. Because y'all have not seen everything about me, but he has, and he still wants me. He still loves me. He still accepts me. Amen. That's how good he is. Quit beating yourself up and thinking that you're not worthy to go to heaven one day. Have a relationship with Jesus. Leave the past in the past. Well, I messed up this morning. That's the past. Embrace God right now. He loves you. Don't worry about what man says. Don't worry about what the last religious place you were at said. You need to hold on to Jesus. And if you mess up tomorrow, ask him to forgive you and get back on board with what he's doing. Does anybody hear the words that are coming out of my mouth this morning? Give him a praise. Oh, help me, God. I'm trying to have a teaching anointing, but God told me to preach. Teachers tell it, preachers yell it. Amen. So watch this. All these things, right? Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud blasphemers. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Watch what he said. And from such people, turn away. Don't mean you don't love nobody. But how many know that you can have toxic ties with people? You're trying to love them. You're trying to minister to them. But while you're trying to bring them up, they're bringing you down. Right? It's certainly okay to love people to Christ, but it's also okay to turn away if what they stand for, what they're into, and who they've chosen to be pollutes your spirit with contaminating contempt. Therefore, can I have the first shouting point this morning, guys? Watch this. We can get burned by people, but we don't have to hold on to them so long that we get burned up. I can hang in there with you even if you burn me a little bit. But if I start burning up, I'm going to have to let you go. Right? I am. I refuse. I'll get burned a little bit. Come on, somebody. Because God's with me and he's always with me in the fire. But I'm not going to stay there like a fool and get burned up. I'm going to have to come away for a while till you, come on, want to walk where I'm walking. Amen? Don't mean I don't love you. Amen? Don't mean I don't love you. Christians get a bad rap sometimes because we have to pull away. But no, 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 no. I got to walk with God to preserve. 
I can't allow it to keep being polluted and brought down. Amen? Hallelujah. I've got to walk with God to preserve. Now, I'm not telling nobody in here to be stuck up. I'm not telling anybody in here to refuse anybody. But you know when you get to your breaking point. Amen? Hallelujah. You know when you're being taken advantage of. No matter how it is. Whether it's emotionally, mentally, financially. Amen? You know when to put a stop to it. Right? We can get burned by people, but we don't have to hold on to them so long that we get burned up. Amen. Can I give you another scripture this morning? Paul, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. We'll put it on the screen up there if you don't have time to turn there. But Paul, the apostle Paul, alludes to the event that takes believers and shakes the world. It's called the day of the Lord that we know as the rapture. This Wednesday night, we're going to talk about the day of the Lord versus the day of Christ. The day of the Lord, we translate and interpret to mean the rapture of the church, which triggers the great tribulation. And then when Jesus comes at the end of the great tribulation with the saints from heaven, that's called the day of Christ, which ends the seven-year tribulation and then begins the millennial reign of Christ on earth, okay? Anybody ever, if you've not ever heard our teachings on that, we have taught Revelation twice in this church, every single verse of it. And so, um, either way, we, I don't claim to be an expert on it, but it is the book that the Bible says you'll be blessed if you study it and understand it. And it used to really intimidate me. And then a mentor of mine by the name of uh, the prophetess Ann Baines told me on her hospital bed, she said, son, you'll never understand a book in the Bible better or anything in the Bible better than when you're in charge of having to teach it. Because then you will seek it out like never before. Because you always want to make sure you know what you're talking about before you get in front of people, right? All right. So this chapter in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 here picks right up where the infamous previous chapter 4 leaves, which describes the rapture. Remember, in chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians, it talks about how we'll be gathered up in the air, right? And the trumpet will sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive will be called up together, and so forever we'll be with the Lord. Chapter 5 picks right up there. Uh, this begins the seven-year great tribulation upon earth. It says in verse 5, But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord. Somebody say the day of the Lord. Day of the Lord. We believe it to be the rapture of the church. I know that rapture is not a Bible word, but rapture means to be called up and gathered together. The rapture, we believe, I am a pre-tribulation rapture believer like many great teachers out there. And one of them uh, is Perry Stone. If you've ever listened to the ministry of Perry Stone, he is a great uh, end times teacher. He talks very fast, so you have to uh, hang on to what he's saying. But he's a pre-tribulation believer. John Hagee is, Jensen Franklin, people like that. They, they believe that too. I know people and I have colleagues that believe in a mid-tribulation, Okay. And, and some believe in what I call the U-turn belief, where you get to the end and you, you know, okay. But I realize that some people think we're in the tribulation right now, okay? I'm going to disprove that, not because I'm trying to show that I'm smart or I'm clever, but I want to back it up with the Word of God, okay? Because we're living in a time right now where our doctrine has to be solid, okay? It's got to be solid. And so watch this. So... Concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. That means it is suddenly. It comes out of nowhere, right? In the twinkling of an eye, chapter 4 said. You know how fast and quick a twinkling is? It's not a blink, it's a twink. Okay? All right, a blink is like this. Now that's fast. A twink is even... Faster than a blink. All right? So it comes as a thief in the night. Verse 3. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. That tells me rapture. Right? Peace and safety. It's going to come. That tells me that even though things are kind of jacked up right now, they're going to calm down. Can I tell you to be at peace? It's going to get better. 
I'm going to tell you what we're living in right now in just a moment. All right. He says, the sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. Right? Who is they? The unsaved. What about the saved? Verse 4. But you, brethren. See, it's, it's separating the saved from the unsaved. But you, brethren, meaning the saved, are not in darkness. Are not in dark, darkness. So that this day should overtake you as a thief. Meaning you are not going to go through it. Right? How can we be here and it, that not affect us? Amen. I know about Goshen. I know that we can be in a place of where great tragedy is befalling and we can be protected. But I know, come on. He's already explained in four, in chapter four, that we'll be gathered up together in the air to be with the Lord, right? That the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we who are alive and are saved are going to gather together to be with the Lord. So watch this. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. Verse 5. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. I want you to meditate on that for a moment. We are Christians. There is something different about us. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. If I'm once saved and always saved, why do I got to watch about anything? Why do I got to be sober? Why can't I eat, drink, and be merry? Why can't I celebrate? Why can't I do anything I want to do? Why do I got to be watchful if I'm taken care of and I never have anything else I got to watch out for? Oh, help me, Jesus. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do that are caught up in themselves, caught up in the world. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Meaning clear-minded. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, clear-minded. Come on, somebody. Is this old-fashioned? I'm not in the Old Testament. I'm in the New Testament. Amen? I'm not trying to rain on nobody's party. I'm just saying that the Bible says be clear-minded. Amen? Hallelujah. Back in the day, I couldn't do that. I did things for a reason. I wanted to escape. I wanted my mind to be blurry so I wouldn't have to focus on my pain. I went too far with it. And there were many people I, I was around who didn't. They handled things better than I did. But at the same time, when he says sober, how do I know that sober, to be sober, well, how does, it, does it differentiate from being a sloppy drunk or just having a buzz? He's not telling us the level here. You know, the law says if you drink more than two beers, you're not fit to drive, right? We're not getting down into this here. He just says be sober. So you take it as it is, Amen. Take it as it is. I'm not trying to rain on your party. I'm just saying the Bible says that drunkards are of the darkness at night. People drink to get drunk at night. Amen. But I tell you that people of the day, you need to let your light shine. You are too busy living for me to be involved in anything that can pull you back. Come on, somebody. I just... Everybody knows I love everybody. I'm going to love you no matter what. Jesus is going to love you no matter what. Amen. There's so much to be said about that. But at the same time, I just live, love living for him that I'm not going to worry about moderation versus excessiveness. I'm just going to live for Jesus. That's, that's just the route I'm taking. Amen. He says, so who are of the day, be sober, clear-minded, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a, a, a helmet, the hope of salvation. Now, here it is right here. Here, here, here it is that tells you we're not going to be in this time. Verse 9, for God did not appoint us to wrath. Somebody ought to say thank you besides Pastor Tim. Anybody else in here thankful? For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. What a comfort it is to belong to him and be covered by him. 
that I would avoid such calamity means I am covered by him. Can I give you another shouting point this morning? Watch this. Especially as the end draws near, it should be very clear who a Christian is covered by. Especially as we get closer to the end, it should be very clear who a Christian is covered by. Can I tell you who a Christian is covered by? Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. And if you're married, your spouse. The number one thing that attacks people is when they're not covered by Jesus Christ. And then if you are a Christian and you're in a marriage, if you're not being covered by your spouse, you better get ready for all hell to come against you. Come on, somebody. You have got to cover. If you're sitting beside your spouse right now, you need to grab their hand and you need to let them know you got them covered. Amen? Come on, somebody. The enemy wants to attack marriages. He wants husbands to not walk in their roles. He wants wives to not walk in their roles. If your marriage is being attacked by disrespect, if your marriage is being attacked by dishonor, If your marriage is being attacked by one of you not being able to keep your business private. If your marriage is being attacked by your in-laws trying to run your house instead of you running your house. If your marriage bed is being attacked. Come on somebody. Amen. It is a time to get out the roses. It's time to get out the chocolates. It's time to date again. Good God Almighty. It's time to fire up that marriage bed like never before. Come on somebody. Y'all don't like me talking like this. They don't like me talking like this brother Rassi. But we got to talk about it in church. Show me a dead marriage, I'll show you dead Christians. Show me a lukewarm marriage, I'll show you lukewarm Christians. But good God Almighty, you show me a Christian marriage that's on fire for one another, they'll be on fire for Jesus too. And a lot of times, if they're not on fire for each other, guess what? They're not on fire for God. You say, Pastor, you're talking to my situation right now. I'm ready for things to get fired up around here at my house. All right, buddy. You get on fire for God. Because there is nothing more sexy. Yeah, I said it. There is nothing more sexy to a woman of God than a man of God that is not ashamed. I said it's not ashamed to lift his hands for his Savior and his Lord. Quit being so proud, brother, that you can't lift your hands up for Jesus. Oh, help me. Help me. None of this is in my notes. As the end draws near, it should be very clear who a Christian is covered by. Hallelujah. We live in this world, so I know we have to vote and we have to support this and support that and we have jobs. But can I tell you, politicians will not cover you. Your boss man, he pays you, but he does not cover you. Come on, somebody. You have two coverings, and that is your covering with Christ and your covering in your marriage. Amen? Hallelujah. You say, well, I'm not in a marriage no more. or My my spouse passed away or I'm divorced. Then you are still covered by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are not alone. Amen? All right, all right. Final scripture. Anybody getting anything out of this this morning? Jesus even speaks of the unprecedented end himself. Matthew 24, verse 1. Jesus predicts destruction of the temple, signs of the times, and the end of the age. Here Jesus speaks in a transcending manner, which forewarns his lead disciples of persecutions that they would endure, as well as the end times for the church as a whole. Okay? So remember, when Jesus is talking here, He's telling them of things that are about to happen to them. All those disciples would be martyred, except John. And they tried to martyr him, but he survived, right? And God had a plan, take him to the island of Patmos and give him the revelation of Jesus, right? But they would endure horrible things uh, and be martyred for the cause of Christ, and so have Christians throughout all time. So remember, some of it pertains 
to a time that's already passed. Some of it pertains to things that have not yet happened, and some of it can, cor- some of it can correlate between both, okay? It says in Matthew 24, 1, Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. He was prophesying. That very temple would be destroyed in a Jewish uprising against Rome. Rome would come in and a general by the name of Titus would knock down that temple. The original temple built by Solomon was knocked down during the Babylonian takeover in the days of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Jeremiah the prophet and all of that. This was the second temple that had been built. And we know that there's talks of the next temple being built as well. And so, this has already happened, okay? Now, verse 3, now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. And will deceive many. That has happened. Okay? There was a band by the name of Jim Jones. There was a band in Waco, Texas by the name of David Koresh. Who claimed to be the Messiah. Many have come in his name. Right? And you will hear of wars. Verse 6. Wars and rumors of wars. We have been hearing of wars and rumors of wars for decades, right? You will hear of those wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, right? The end is not yet, and we've seen all kinds of wars. It says, for nation will rise against nation. That was then and now. Nations have risen against other nations. In the lifetime of some uh, in this room, perhaps, and many of them are, are, are dying off now, but there have been, wor- there was World War II. Before that, there was World War I. And if a war was to ever take place between the United States and China and all these other people were to get involved, that would be World War III. And there will be a World War III, Okay. But that's already happened as far as nations rising against nations. That has been happening. Kingdoms against kingdom. And then it says there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows, not the great tribulation. It's the beginning of sorrows. They had beginning of sorrows back then. And there are beginning of sorrows now. Anybody that's saying that we are in the tribulation now, I disagree. We are not in the great tribulation. We are in the beginning of sorrows. Right now, more than ever, people are talking about the return of Jesus Christ like I've never seen. All you got to do is go to social media. I see people who have never said anything about the Lord talking about the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. The Lord's got to be coming. We're seeing so many things. It's hard to to touch one another. We've got grandparents who haven't seen their grandchildren in months. We've got horrible things going on. Businesses that have bankrupted because of the shutdown that will not return. It's unprecedented. This disease, this sickness that came from China, a communist country. You say, are you being racist against China? No, I'm telling you. That a symbol in China is a red dragon. And in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, it tells about a scene of where a dragon is trying to take the children of a woman. We have compared it to when uh, the different parts of the Bible where there was an annihilation of the, the, the Judean seed. Uh, It was the daughter of Jezebel. She tried to kill off her own grandsons so they wouldn't claim the crown. We know that King Herod in the days of when Jesus was a baby wanted to have all the young boys killed in Bethlehem just to make sure he killed Jesus. And we know that Jesus, they fled to Egypt to escape that. Dr. Jack Van Ampey, who went home to be with the Lord recently, 
he taught, and I think he was so spot on. He's one of the greatest end times teachers ever, ever. And he taught that he believed because the Bible says that the devil is the prince of the power of the air, and the reason that the revelation was seen as a dragon in the air is that Satan would one more time try to capture the church as the church is being raptured up. And that makes sense. But also another transcending thought that came to my spirit yesterday was this. If China is represented as a red dragon, what type of evil has come in this coronavirus that has hit the children of God, that has attacked the church? Amen. Come on. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm not saying anything intentional was done. But could this yet also be an attack from the dragon, amen, to inflict pain and to cause a disruption in gathering? Because people are afraid to come to church right now. People are afraid to pray together right now. Come on, somebody. We're bumping elbows instead of hugging necks anymore, and I respect that. But there is an attack on the gathering. There is an attack on our economy. We have the greatest economy in the history of america just a few months ago then a coronavirus comes and literally takes it down overnight unemployment was at an all-time low and now <laughs> come on somebody it, listen i know things are going to get better but at the same time there was a dragon that was attacking through a virus we need to realize, amen, we can be practical and we can do all these things. I'm praying about a doctor that I have heard about in Texas that says it will be no vaccine that can cure this. It will be an inhaled substance. It's very over-the-counter. There is a cure. People are getting better from it, amen, because I don't know about you. I don't want nothing injected in my body at a time like this, amen. Amen, if that's if, if God's got his hand on that man, hallelujah, get in front of the president. Get in front of Dr. Fucci or Fauci or Fauci or whatever his name is, amen. Get in front of somebody. Let's get that thing out there. Amen. If you're telling me it's a little inhaler. All right. I want no shot. But God showed me that. And amen. There, there's something to that. There's something to that. But it's also a transcending thought as well. All right. I wanted to share that vision with you. All right. So there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places. That's all happened. All these are the beginning of the sor of sorrows. That's what we're in. Verse 9, then they will deliver you up, then and now, up to tribulation and kill you, and you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sakes. That happened to them, and it has happened to other Christians as well throughout the world. Verse 10 says, and then many will be offended. We are living in the biggest cancel culture ever. Redskins name didn't bother nobody for 50 years. Now you're going to change my grandpa's favorite football team's name. Not my favorite football team, but it was my grandpa's favorite football team. Cancel culture. Cancel everything. Cancel this. Rename the Texas Rangers because that's, a, that's law enforcement. And da, 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 da. Come on, somebody. Are there some bad seeds in law enforcement that need to be picked out? Yes. But do we still need to love, support, and honor law enforcement? Absolutely. We don't need anarchy. That's of the devil. Many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. That has happened so many times. I'm going to say something that somebody might in here might not like. But I believe that men of God that have sinned on a global level, meaning the whole world saw their sin, I'm not saying they can't be forgiven because they can. But I personally, I've got a problem with men of God who were arrested and went to prison for federal crimes because of the way they handled donations and money was given. And then they're allowed after all these years to get back on TV and ask for money again. I don't think it's right. Amen? And then I also don't think it's right for men of God that have been forgiven 
for much, and then they're absolutely able to get back on TV again, okay, back on TV again, and then they're going to judge every other preacher and tear everybody down if they don't do this and they don't do that. Don't get caught up in tearing preachers down. You might have one that just preaches grace. You might have one that just smiles and preaches hope, but we need some happy people in this world. It's not time to be tearing people down, amen? What is that? Come on, there's certain preachers that got a niche. T.D. Jakes preaches about life like nobody else. Come on. Jens and Franklin teaches about fasting like nobody else. Joseph Prince will teach about grace like nobody else. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. If they're preaching the truth and preaching the gospel, that's what we need to hear. But there's also something to be said, though, for the preacher that don't ever say nothing about repent. Because that's the number one thing John the Baptist came out the gate saying. Repent, repent, repent. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's been many deceivers too, right? Hallelujah. Grandma don't need to give away all her money so she can get the magic towel at 3 a.m. Amen. Keep an eye on what grandma's watching on TV. Hallelujah. Take all her money. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many, and because lawlessness will abound. Are you seeing that on your news? People being killed in towns where the police have been kicked out of. Lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. Here's what I want to tell you today. Many of you are fed up with COVID-19. Many of you are fed up with the lawlessness that you're seeing on TV. Many of you are fed up with the division that you're seeing on TV. Many of you are fed up with the race baiting that you're seeing on TV. Many are fed up with the dishonoring and the disrespect and the fake news that you see on your TV. But in a time like this, Christians, it's not time to get so bombarded with side-taking that you allow your love to grow cold. Because at the end of the day, whoever you agree with or disagree with, amen, hallelujah, C come on, God made them, God died for them too, and you've got to love everybody. Don't you get caught up in this political confusion and all these things going on in our society to the point that we can't even love one another no more. And come on, come on, amen, hallelujah. People that wear a shirt that say Black Lives Matter are welcome in this church. Anybody that's got a MAGA hat, amen, even though my grandpa said, amen, come on, you can't do this, can't do that, amen. But if you're wearing a MAGA hat, you're welcome in this church because we see past culture and we see kingdom. We see past color and we see kingdom. I know it's hard. And there are churches right now that will not grow. Because if you don't agree with them politically, they don't want you there. And they won't come right out and tell you. They just won't talk to you. Right? And there's some churches that will say they're not racist. But they want people of color in their church as long as it's not too many people of color in their church. Amen. Am I telling them something this morning? And then God forbid, we ain't letting nobody that don't look like us be in leadership with us. If that's the case in your church, you, <laughs> there is racism in your church. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not the kingdom unless we love one another like Jesus loves. Amen. Don't let your love grow cold. I know I'm running a little long. Amen. Verse 13 says, and this is, even if you're a post-trib believer, I'm a pre-trib believer. But he, endure, he who endures to the end shall be saved. I'm a pre-trib believer. I endure to the rapture, I'm saved. If you're in the rapture because you're not saved, then you endure to the end so that you can be saved. Either way, you got to endure to the end so you'll be saved. And watch this. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. I know it's hard to believe it. There are little corners of the earth that don't know the gospel. Don't speak our language. They're into voodoo and all this other stuff. They don't know. 
But I'm here to tell you, there are missionaries that are going into the darkest depths and corners of the world to preach the gospel, risking their lives for it. And satellite TV, as well as internet and cell phones, are making a way for people to hear the gospel. It has almost reached that point, and when it does, Jesus said, I'm coming. We're getting close, but we are not in the tribulation. We are in the beginning of sorrows. So not until the whole world hears the gospel. Can I give you a very simple last shouting point that's not deeply theological, not deeply intelligent. It's just plain talk. Now, we're in Sandy Cross. Can I just talk plain? He who endures to the end shall be saved. No matter the disappointment, no matter the difficulties, no matter the discouragement, no matter the despair, hold on to Jesus. Don't let anything make you let go of Jesus. Jesus don't let go of nobody, but many people let go of Jesus. And in an unprecedented time like this right here, it would be really easy. A lot of people are giving up on God. They're saying, what good does it do to pray anymore? This didn't happen. This person didn't get healed. This breakthrough didn't take place. Can I tell you, I can't help what didn't take place for you. But what I do know is what he has done in my life. And nobody has ever been able to do in my life what Jesus has done in mine. And he is a, not a respecter of persons. What he's done for me, he will do for you. But you got to believe him. you got to trust him. you got to look to him first before you look at Oprah, Dr. Phil, and anybody else. you got to cry out to him before you comment on Facebook. Instead of being so addicted to Facebook, why don't you get addicted to his book? Because that is where the answers come from. That is where your help comes from. That is where power is. Good God. Keep some of your privacy private. Good God. It ain't privacy if it ain't private. Amen. I'm here to tell you right now, he's a friend that sticks close Closer than a brother. He is the one that will never leave you nor forsake you, but go with you always until the end of the world. I'm here to tell you there is nothing greater than him. There's nothing sweeter than him. As the old song says, he gets sweeter as the days go by. Amen. I have tasted and seen that he is good. And because I know he is good, I come too far now to back up on him now. I won't back up. I won't give up. I won't back down. I won't denounce him. But I Instead, I plan to hold on to him all the way to the end. Is anybody with me this morning? Stand to your feet if you are. If you're with me this morning, give him a mighty praise this morning because he's worthy. As I close this morning, as absolutely unprecedented the times we're in, it's so vital to know Jesus Christ with every head bowed and every eye closed. I want to ask you this morning, nothing more important than what's going on in this room. Nothing more important than what is going on in this room right now. All the singing, all the honoring, all the celebrating, all the preaching, all the teaching, everything has culminated to this moment right here. If you're here right now with your head bowed and your eye closed, everyone please. And you don't know Jesus, you've never asked the Lord into your heart. I want you to slip your hand up for a few seconds until myself and the Holy Spirit see it. Anybody, 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 anybody. If you've asked the Lord into your heart before, but disappointments, grief, disbelief, unbelief, heartaches, heartbreaks, the suffering of life, tragedy. You lost someone you don't think you should have lost that early. It caused you to turn your back on him, denounce him in any way, shape, or form. And you want to return to him today and say, God, I am all yours. I'm sold out for you for the rest of my life. If that's you, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I see that hand. Amen. Let's pray right now. Father, I pray right now that you'll solidify any relationship in this place that has once walked close with you but feels as though they've turned their back on you. God, we know you didn't die on Calvary for us to have a roller coaster ride salvation up and down, up and down. 
But although we do know the enemy will attack a new Christian. So God, we ask you right now for them to embrace you, to invest in you like never before. So that the seed that's been sown won't be gobbled up by the fowls of the air, by life, by the enemy, by things meant to pull people away. What you did on Calvary was solid. Let your people be solid. We pray that today. God, we honor you today. If there's any sick among us today, lift your hands up. If there's anyone wanting to intercede for the sick today, lift your hands up. I pronounce healing in the name of Jesus. The very same power that raised you from the dead, Lord God, is alive in every single born-again, blood-bought believer. May they believe by faith. And may their faith be strong enough to lay hands on the sick and they be made well in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we declare it today. We honor your power. We know it comes from you, but it can dwell within us when we belong to you. God, may we walk in it. May we use that authority. Not of our name, but of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. Have you had a good time in church today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you so much for being here. At this time, I want to get ready to dismiss. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May His face shine upon you. We love you and we honor you. At this time, I want the handicapped, the elderly, and immune deficient to be dismissed first. The rest of you can sit down momentarily. I want you to share this on Facebook today. I want you to come back. We're going to talk about the day of the Lord versus the day of Christ. We're going to study that for 55 minutes or so this Wednesday night. It's well worth it. If you cannot be here in person, please tune in online. If you watch it later, please like it, comment, so we know we are connecting with you. If you're not in church right now, don't lose connection, please. It's what the enemy wants. He wants people who are not in church right now to lose connection. And we don't want that to happen. I love all of you. And I look forward to the day I stand in those doors again and greet you. God bless you. Thank you for coming to church. Bless the Lord one more time with some praise. We'll see you Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. God bless you.